What's up guys, I'm Justin Davis. We are celebrating our 10 year anniversary this year and January has been a pretty wild month for me personally and for the FB community. There's been actually a lot of releases this month in the first three weeks of January. It's been kind of crazy. And I'm also getting more emails about further releases coming out in the next week or two. So stay tuned for what's new coming out in FPV. If you're into FPV, this is a great channel because we get a lot of the drones out there they get released and you get a good honest review and flight test on each drone we have here. So this month it's been kind of wild. We've been through pretty much every single category in FPV, starting out with some of the ready to fly kits. If you're a beginner, you want everything in one box. We have one here that we talked about and we did kind of a beginner's tutorial on how to fly a drone a while back, uh, how to fly a quad in 2024, an updated review of the Aquila 16. So you can go back and check out that full review if you're a beginner. And then we also had a, a lot of cool Cinewoops, starting out with a micro sub 250 G class. We had some cool stuff from Flywoo. We also had some brand new Cinewoops that we were viewed yesterday from YMZ FPV. It's a brand new Starship uh, X1, which was on 4S. So I haven't flown a two inch 4S in a while. And this thing was like a crazy ripper. So you can fly it indoors. It does want to keep going faster and faster. It's kind of a crazy quad. We'll talk about that one coming up. We also saw a bunch of new releases from Gep RC. I wasn't ex expecting this many releases from Gep RC this year. I mean, uh, so far we've already had the Domain, which the Domain was a 3.5 inch freestyle ripper on 6S, um, kind of a compact little freestyle drone that you can pretty much fly anywhere. And we also had an ultralight long range quad, which was the Gap RC Turn. This one is running on, uh, you can run a Lion on this one and get up to about 20 minutes flight time, uh, 16 to 20 minutes flight time on this one. We'll check this one out coming up. This one also has DJI 03 and a micro nano M10 GPS on there. So that one was pretty cool. I've gotten upwards of 30 satellites on this little tiny nano antenna. So uh, very nice return to home setup on that one. And what surprised me the most, I think, so far this month was the crazy release of the Mark IV LR8. Uh, you've seen seven inch, seven and a half inch, you've seen eight inch on my channel, and you've seen the large 10 inch long range drones. And people ask me a lot lately, should I buy a 10 inch or should I buy a seven or eight? What's the difference? We've been talking about some of the differences in those and I should do a video on that. Um, the difference is that in my opinion, how each one differs. Uh, 10 inch just seems to be pretty large. Uh, large to fly, large to transport, and handle. Uh, when you get down to the seven and a half inch, that's probably my, about my favorite uh, kind of long range size. You see those two hanging on the wall back there. That's the Crocodile 75 V3 and the Moz 7. And then the, the most surprising release this month, I, I have to get honest about that. That's the Mark IV LR8. Uh, that's this one right here. It's a bare bones, stripped down, analog eight inch long range FPV drone. Has no GPS on the back. You'll need to add that. But for $259, this one blew me away for, for that price. I had to go back and look again, and uh, I thought I had made a mistake, because I have made mistakes before on prices. Um, you know, Sorry about that on the, the Flylens 75. It's not 280, it's actually $400 with an O3 on board, of course. But most of these with O3s are $400 price range. Uh, but I got excited when I thought it was 280, right? Uh, but this one is actually 259, and it's amazingly, stripped down. It's kind of like an old school, long body design, giant motors on here, and solid gem fan glass fiber, eight inch props uh, for, for really getting out there and cruising. And when I was flying it, it did have a little bit of different feel between the seven, the seven and a half inch to the to eight inch size quad frame. So the larger they go out, the bigger the wingspan they get, and the smoother they fly. As far as the tune on board is, is concerned, if it's good, it's gonna have no jello in it. Uh, this one does not. And in comparison to something like the Hellion, we've had a lot of problems, issues, bugs, um, jello in the video on the Hellion. It's got an undermount battery. This one has a top mount battery. And we've been running those nav batteries from Lumineer, which seem to work out pretty good. This is a 6S, 6,000 milliamp battery, and that's gonna get you about 25 minutes on something like the LR8. So I think it's a pretty awesome drone for the price. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the first of our January roundup in 2024. Let me show you some of the good stuff. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and get into it. I wanted to put all three of Gap RC's releases right here in front of you so that you could kind of get a size 
example between the LR8, the Turn, and the Domain. Um, they're all different beasts, honestly, from the frame design to the power system uh, and the way each of these fly. It's amazing that you know one quadcopter can be so different than another. Um, and every single different quadcopter I get my hands on, it's just a complete different animal. And over 10 years, you would think that they would all kind of feel the same to me, um, but they don't, which is a, a really cool thing. But again, like I, I have to say, I was completely shocked and amazed by the price that they came out with for the LR8. Um, and in a way, when I first pulled this out of the box, I thought it was a seven inch, uh, but it's it's actually an eight inch. And the frame was, was kind of, uh, you know, uh, looking like it was a seven inch frame. But when I pulled out the props, I noticed right away that, hey, these are really giant props. They're much bigger than the sevens. So um, they have a lot thicker cord on them as well, but they're also glass fiber, so they'll hold up a lot better in uh, any types of windy scenarios or any extreme weight types of maneuvers that you have in a hard turn or something like that with such a heavy quad. Uh, so you'll notice that a lot of these quads that are at this size for long range use glass fiber um, props instead of just the typical standard plastic that you see on some of the GEP RC, uh, like Domain and the Turn. The Turn doesn't have that heavy weight, so this one can probably lift about five pounds. Uh, and they also just released the LR10, which I really hope that Gep RC is going to send us coming up some Mark IV LR10, and that one can run on 5G. Uh, they have a 1.6 watt version of it. I have a 2 watt version here. This is analog. They also make a 2.5 watt version of the LR10, and the LR10, the 10 inch one, again like $299 for that one, $259 for this 8 inch. But the cool thing about this quad, and not so much the stripped down frame it's super easy to work on it's very simple uh, replaceable arms no GPS on this one uh, you have to have GPS on here so um, that's going to be super important but my favorite thing about this quad for for you guys honestly is the fact that this does come in analog so if you're somebody that has analog goggles you just started out and later on you want to upgrade to DJI you can do that with this quad mainly and you won't have to solder because it has an HD port on this flight controller. Even though it's, a, it's an F4 flight controller, it has an HD port on here. So you can plug in a DJI VTX straight to it, Cadex Vista. Uh, you can put an O3 back here. There's enough room back here for a DJI O3, Cadex Vista. Uh, not so much the air unit because it's not quite long enough for the air unit, but it does have a 20 by 20 mount right here and a, even um, a, a smaller one as well. So actually 20 by 20 and then a little bit larger, like 30 by 30 size, um, maybe 30 by 40 there. It looks like a standard VTX, full size VTX size. And back there is where I have my 915 receiver uh, for my Bandit. And I've, I've talked about that this, this year as well. I'm kind of switching over from using Crossfire to ELRS. Finally, because of the 950 megahertz bandit that came out. Um, and I'll show you that module coming up here, but this is one of those receivers that they have. You can see 915 megahertz on the very top here. I don't know if you can zoom in on that, but um, that is a 915 receiver. And the reason that we fly 915 is it just has a little bit better range than flying on 2.4. I know there's, there's purists out there who've probably gone uh, 20 miles or 30 miles on a 2.4 system, but a lot of the long range guys they like to fly 915. So um, that's what Radio Master came out with with the Bandit series. But again, like pretty impressive the way it flew. It has a great tune on here. It has less jello than the Helion that we've uh, had reports of jello from and lots of other issues with the Helion. So if you're looking for something similar to the Helion, I mean, the Helion is a 10 inch, but if you're looking for something that you would love to start out with for long range to not break the bank, break the budget, uh, yeah, the LR8 is pretty freaking awesome. And if you want a 10, get one for $2.99. Get the freaking LR8, uh, 5.8 and 2.5 watts around $300 is totally insane for uh, that big of a quad for that price. Um, so it looks like Gep RC is giving Darwin FPV some competition and I'd like to see that. Another one that impressed people this month is the Gep RC Turn. And you know, the Turn was one of those quads that is under 250 gram 
but it's supposed to be a range flying type of quad. And you know, with a, a Lion on top, you can fly a 4S 3000 milliamp Lion. I have a couple nav packs over there that I've been using from Luminaire, um, that same type of series for my larger quads, but they make a smaller one for this size quad. And you know, you're gonna get over 250 grams with that. If you wanna put a LiPo on there, you can get it under 250 grams because as it weighs on the scale right here, it's 181.2 grams with the GPS and um, the straps not on here, but you know, that's gonna add two or three more grams. Um, not a lot of weight difference there, but this one has a much smaller power system on it and it's designed with the dead cat frame in mind. It has kind of a long body center plate here for uh, a pretty large battery. Again, like 3000 milliamp. You have eight bolt top plate release. You got your 3M pad here and the Micro Nano M10 GPS. This one just came out. And if you don't know much about G T M10 GPS, it just, it connects to Galileo GPS uh, and, and all the different types of satellite signals, but it connects much faster. It has a much faster um, home point load rate. Probably in about 10 seconds, you'll have 25 to 30 satellites, which is um, really, really cool. The other thing about this one I mentioned, um, and, I, and I talked about this recently with the YMZ quad that we reviewed yesterday. Um, they have the antenna up front, the little mini Immortal T up here, and um, they have the receiver just behind the camera unit right here. Uh, and it has space in there if you wanna add an external beeper, which I always recommend. But having this up front allows the quad to rotate around. Even if you're facing away from yourself, you still got a line of sight signal back to your radio. And this is probably one of the best places that you can put a Mortal T on a long range drone is up front underneath the camera because almost any angle you go at, you're gonna be able to get signal back. Um, that's very important. Like on the uh, Starship design, we talked about this. This one's underneath and in the back, back here. So when you make that rotation, when you're flying away from home, you could fail safe because at that point you're blocking the antenna underneath back here. So this one really should be moved to the up front position. That way on any axis that you rotate, as long as you're kind of having a little bit of forward speed, you're gonna have a straight line of sight back to your radio. Uh, but this one was fun. It, it kind of came out of the middle of nowhere. And, and in a way it's kind of a competition to the Flywoo Explorer LR quad, little four inch quad that we saw a while back. Um, and these are GAP RC. Let me see if I can see the motor size on here. Speedex version two, 1404 series motors. They're pretty low KV to accommodate uh, either a Lion or a LiPo. And yeah, that was a great release for this month. And it comes with uh, analog versions and the O3 version, which is uh, super nice, sexy little quad. Now up next is the GEP RC Domain, and this is a 3.5 inch analog or DJI O3 freestyle drone. This can fly on a 6S 1050 all the way up to something like a 6S 1400. Uh, it does have pretty large beastie motors. It has a dead cat style frame, so no props in view there. And the dry weight without a battery on board is 311 grams. With a 6S 1050, you're probably looking at around 500 and Actually, no, 480.81 grams. That's not bad. 481 grams with a 6S 1050. If you were to add a GoPro on there, it would be much heavier. Um, and I feel like this one is designed like kind of beastie. It does have super thick, like uh, uh, four millimeter arms on here. They are replaceable, but it has this huge center plate down here. The only thing I didn't like about this frame was that my receiver is hanging out in a TPU shroud on the bottom. Uh, it has two M2 bolts that mount it in right there. And the XT uh, or the uh, Immortal T comes out back here. It also has a spot for adding GPS. Should you want to add GPS? I'm not sure why you would want to. Uh, but this one came out kind of like a miniature Nazgul and it does have side plates. You can get different color side plates, white ones. I kind of like the black ones. I don't know. What do you guys think? Which one's your favorite? Uh, let me know down in the comments below. But this one also has aircraft aluminum up front. It has some silicon dampening on the side of the camera. So it's kind of a, you know, a nice dampened camera. And it also has a mount up front for micro cams or a full size GoPro if you want to. It has two straps in the middle and a pretty decent long body that can definitely support up to about a 1400 milliamp battery. Uh, but with a large GoPro in here, that's gonna scoot your battery pretty far back and you might end up covering up the X-T60 back here. But I do like the fact that it does have uh, a flat, not angled X-T60 
back here because it's going to scoot the battery further back. I've talked about on the larger drones, um, some of those big batteries have shorter leads and it really does change the CG of the quad, which you don't want to do. But overall, the freestyle aspect of this one was crazy. It's, it's really, really fast and it's kind of what I expected out of a three and a half inch uh, freestyle quad um, and the price on this one is close to five hundred dollars so you're looking at four hundred and eighty three dollars to start and that's the pnp if you decide that you want to put like elrs on board that's going to get you up to 4.99 um, tbs nano rx is going to get you 513 dollars for this one so this one's compact but not cheap um, so if you want a kind of a compact dead cat ripper this one's not bad some people don't like dead cat for freestyle but i actually tend to like it. My One of my freestyle picks for last year in 2023 was the Nazgul Evoke series that was the dead cat version. That's definitely my favorite quad with no props in view for 4K03 recording on front. Um, a pretty nice quad with a nice tune on here and a great flight controller from Gep RC. This one's a this was an easy bet if you're looking for something compact and you don't mind spending the extra money. Now, two other January releases in the Cinewoo category are the Flylens 75 here. It's a smaller, like the little brother to the 85 from Flywoo that we reviewed kind of midway in 2023. And around January, this one was released this year. So this one is a smaller footprint, um, but it flies really great indoors. And, and I have to say, like I made some comments, like this is the one that I want to take to our indoor flying Tiny Whoop event because it's so small, it's so light, and it flies really slow if you wanna bring the camera angle down. And I mentioned that this one was like $280 in the review. It's not $280, it's the, um, that's not the DJI-03 version. That is for the Runcam Wasp version, which is more like the Cadex Vista um, hybrid from with a Runcam camera on it. And the Runcam camera does not work with the O3, by the way, so um, just wanna clear up any confusion there with that. And again, the DJI-03 price for this one is around $400 which is close to the same price as the, the YMZ FPV Starship X1 right here. So this is a much bigger two inch um, kind of like tank compared to the fly lens. These are designed to be ultra light with that mini Grom up front for the, the kind of staging for the, the O3 camera, which I love that. Um, you can also put a decased O3 on there if you want to, or of analog VTX. The cage is big enough to hold anything like um, uh, you could probably put a, a Cadex Vista in there but I'm not sure that the walk snail uh, VTX will fit in that cage. Um, but they, they might actually, I think they make a, a walk snail and an HD zero version of these. So they make all the different VTX versions that you'd be looking for. As far as the YMZ release, um, you know this one was fun for indoors and this one has you know kind of like what we call duality. It can fly indoors and it can rip outside. It was fastest, uh, probably the, one of the fastest quads that I've flown on, on 4S two inch setup uh, so far this year. And it's only been like three weeks, uh, I know, but it has a really nice kind of sexy design to it. And all the F YMZ FPV quads are pretty nice. Now this one does come in at, at 439. PNP with an O3, so that's not bad. Uh, and, it, and still, this one is under 250 grams. I'll just put this on the scale real quick and weigh it for you guys while I have you here. Uh, so we're looking at ugh, 139 grams. Yeah, 139 grams for this without a battery. The fly lens is going to be super lightweight. Well, that doesn't even have VTX on there, 42 grams. Uh, so, I mean, hell, if you were flying an analog VTX on here, if that's at 42 grams without a VTX on it, and you add an analog VTX on there, it's going to be pretty light. So um, probably around the 50 to 60 gram weight for, for this quad. Um, but it will be ultra durable with this nice unibody top plate. But this one, on the other hand, again, this one was the Lambo so far for this month and uh, i would love to see like a stripped down version of this one uh, i did decase my o3 you can do that too flywoo has some kits that you can get that have some crossbars that you can take everything apart and get rid of the casing and you can save yourself about 20 grams weight shave about 20 grams weight off that so uh, maybe even 30. that's going to make a huge difference when you're trying to lighten up anything especially as small as this one so um, that's my recommendation there i'll try to find some flywood d case kits and somebody was asking me recently to do a build video of that i think i already have if you look back in the channel last year 
Uh, I'm pretty sure I did a full decasing video of how to decase a DJI-03. Uh, it's, it's not too hard. You just have to have a mini screwdriver and just take the layers apart and put them back together. And then you have it decased and it, and it works out pretty nice. Next up, we have something very original from Sub 250. Um, you know, I, I talked about this in the review, how unique this frame design is, how low profile it is. It's very, very squashed from top to bottom, very low profile style frame, um, different than some of the other ones out there like the Pablo 35 with, you know, kind of the, the plastic prop guards. Uh, these are pretty durable, but this one comes with some kind of pretty narrow, sexy carbon fiber prop guards. And they are across the bottom of the quad, so it acts as the bottom plate. And this is removable on the bottom. It also has these TPU bumpers, which I really like. I think this looks super cool. The whole thing kind of looks well thought out. You have access under here to the DJI 03. Cable can go straight in there. And then they also rerouted the flight controller USB-C port to the very back of this quad. So that's also kind of convenient to have that. Uh, one thing is that these wires are hanging out back here, uh, but once you tilt this back, and this is the other unique thing about this quad is that the antenna is stowable. Um, so you can tilt it underneath this battery strap and then you can tilt it up when you're ready to fly. I thought that was pretty neat. They also have a flat XT30 mount right here in the top plate of this frame, the unibody. And you know, your 3M's pad here, your battery goes this direction on the quad. They also have these two side plates right here. These side panels hold down, and these are aluminum that hold down your battery strap. So kind of taken from GEP RC's design. We've seen that before in the Cinelog series. But up front, what's different about this quad is that it had this weird kind of like, uh, almost like AR-15 looking uh, shroud across the front. It looks like I could put accessories on here and things. Um, and you can, because this front plate actually comes off and then you have a camera mount that can go on with four screws right here up front. So pop that on, just cover that up. If you're flying an O3 and you don't care, that will go back on there and you continue to fly. But what sets this one apart from some of the other ones out there, again, is this shroud up front. And this is not just kind of a shroud system up here. It also has grommets underneath here. And what's unique about this particular design is that it, yeah, well, it does have a true horizontal camera angle on it so you can fly it indoors and get it up to about 25 degrees on the full tilt. It has grommets on here. It has four grommets, two up front and two back here underneath this top plate shroud. And what's neat about this is that not only is the camera in the uh, grommet system and suspended, also the VTX is suspended as well. And I don't really think that they needed to do that, but in a crash, it's going to give it a little bit of give here. So uh, it's not going to be a hard hit because it is suspended along with the camera. You can see when I move the VTX that the camera also moves. So that's kind of neat that they did that. And they put it all in one staging system there with this shroud over top of it protecting it. So uh, I, I thought it was pretty cool. And, and I was glad to see that it didn't come with a proprietary battery setup. So you can use any type of batteries on this one that you want. And I think it flew great. It flew nice and smooth with the inverted motor design and it has enough power to do kind of mild freestyle with 1404 motors. Um, it is, you know, kind of one of those quads that has a little bit of best of both worlds. Now, moving on to Beta FPV, they released the Pavo 35 micro brushless Cinewhoop. And man, I gotta say, th this is a 3.5 inch uh, Cinewhoop with inverted motors. And, you know, at first glance, it appears to be just kind of a reversed version of like a 3.5 inch uh, freestyle quad. Um, what's cool about this one is that the, the tune on here is really good. Um, it is sexy to look at. It has LEDs all the way around it um, that plug in in the very back right here by this cable. Uh, it is rocking some pretty large motors on here. These are the Lava um, 2006 series motors with 2400 kV uh, and they have the Bullnose series three blade tri props on here. Um, they have full size M2 bolts holding the motors down because God's sakes, why would you put little tiny uh, mo motor bolts like that? But this is nice because it has a very simple 
design. Um, the one thing that I complained about on this one was the fact that this battery strap is too small for a 6S battery um, because every time I crashed, the battery would fly off because this is a mini strap. This mini strap probably could hold something like a 4S850, but when you're trying to hold down a 6S 1300 or a 1050 on here, um, even with these 3M plates right here, it does end up flying off. So I wish this was a little bit bigger for a full size battery strap because really a, a 1300 is at, at, at a point a, a full size battery. So uh, it has enough width here to accommodate any 1300 or 1400 battery. Back here in the very back, I've got my Immortal T. I've got my DJI 03 antenna back here. That's a dual singular antenna coming off the back. You can pull that up just a little bit get a little more height out of it. And you have a four bolt release on the bottom for getting to your O3. Uh, so pretty easy to work on. I, I had fun putting this one together. They sent it to me uh, without an O3, so I had to end up using my O3. But since this one has been put together, I haven't taken it back apart because it's really fun to fly. Uh, super smooth and it will do freestyle and it will do indoor flying. So um, this is not really gonna be a real estate type of drone. It's a little bit fast for that. But if you want something that you can kind of take outside and get some pretty sick chase footage, like if you want to do drift car chasing, this one's fast enough to do like drift car FPV cinema videos or even go out and do some kind of just mild to, to mid-grade type of freestyle. Um, but this one is up along the upper echelon, like the Cinelog 35 V2 uh, as far as freestyle goes. So those two quads are probably some of the best Cinewoop freestylers out there with true duality uh, as far as uh, freestyle and cinema goes. And this month wouldn't be complete without some of the stuff you see here. Uh, a couple of the items we haven't really gotten to be able to review yet. And the first of those items is the iFlight Commando 8 Lite. That is this one right here. This one's a game style controller and it is running ELRS, which is a very interesting price point. Uh, it seems like a lot of competition has come out since the Radio Master Pocket released. Um, that one's also kind of a, a kind of a mashup between like a mid-sized radio, something like the Boxer and a game style remote. Because if you think about it, it's kind of a more boxy, smaller version of a Boxer. Very uh, interesting, like the little brother to the Boxer, but so far, this year, the Boxer Max is still my go-to radio. That's kind of why I have it sitting here. As well as moving over, I guess, moving away from TBS Crossfire day by day using the 915 megahertz Bandit ELRS module. Uh, this one is a beast with the Moxon antenna, and this will get you, this antenna will boost your range up by about nine times. So um, very awesome, but it is a directional style antenna. Got to kind of have it pointed towards wherever you're flying. Once it goes behind you, um, not so good. But as long as you stay facing your quad, it's gonna be a great setup for um, flying close in, medium range and long range. But the Commando 8 Lite, that one's a very bare bones radio. It doesn't have uh, any type of screen on it. It just has push button navigation here. Um, the latest version of ELRS, it's also updatable. It has a micro USB slot down here with internal batteries here, and it has an SD card slot on this side for uh, models and updates for running Edge TX on there. So um, that one's kind of a cool radio. It does have gimbals that you can take off and stow. Uh, that is kind of a nice feature of that. It's not a folding gimbal like the, the Commando 2, uh, but $69 is not bad. The next version of a cheap radio that we have, we did review this one on the channel this month, and this is the HJLRC C1 remote control. Uh, this one also has no screen. It's ELRS. It's very easy to um, set up. It comes without 18650s in the back, um, but mine came with them, thanks to HJLRC sending me a couple. Uh, you can also get a dongle to work with this one. Um, which is kind of cool if you want to use this one for a simulator. So people that want to use a simulator, the dongle works as kind of a receiver on there. So um, that one's kind of cool. But this one's $55, which is uh, pretty awesome that it, uh, it's kind of an entry level controller. It, if you want to be able to fly simulators and have built in ELRS for 500 milliwatt TX, that's actually pretty cool. And uh, I, I do like the transparent look of this and full size 18650s back there. So you're gonna get at least six hours worth of runtime out of this transmitter uh, versus something like the Zorro at like two hours. So um, that was kind of a drawback of the Zorro using this shorter style uh, Lion pack batteries. You can also upgrade this antenna 
with this external foldable antenna uh, for the Commando 8. They also sent me one of these. Just goes in right through here, plugs in with a little uh, tiny UFL style connector here, uh, IPEX connector, plugs right into the back module on that radio. Uh, and you get some extra hardware in this bag as well. Now, the next thing that we, we, we have that we haven't been able to get to review is the Radio Master ELRS updater. It's a USB powered ELRS updater, and it comes with some pins that pretty much what you can do is once you plug this in, it powers through the computer, and you can plug this straight into the four ports on your ELRS receiver, and you can make updates which is really nice. So they have a couple different ways you can do it. Uh, I don't like what I've seen people using these little connectors because they seem to fall off. And if you have uh, at least four of them running at the same time with these wires in conjunction, it's kind of a pain. So um, the <laughs> this four pin setup here is much better because you can press it down to all four spots on the ELRS receiver and make contact and just hold it in place and that will make your update um, mu a much easier option than trying to hold those pins in uh, on your receiver or uh, add pins to your receiver or over on this side. So um, these things are just a pain. Get rid of them and um, try to use this setup. It's much, much better. But this was a cool product because you guys have some bricked RXs out there. I know you do. You have some RXs that you can't get working. You can't get updated. So Radio Master is trying to make it easier with that system. Uh, and I'll try to put a link down below for that one as well. So we pretty much went over just about everything in this kind of January roundup. The next big thing that I, I think I'd like to mention again is the Aquila 16. I originally did a review of this one and I flew out in the backyard and I had terrible reception. I did have it on 25 milliwatt and it was just not really good reception. It doesn't have an antenna that sticks up off here. It's an internal antenna. I talked about this in my review. I hated that. Um, so it really has a limited range on 25 milliwatt. You can actually crank this one up to uh, around 200 milliwatt. Um, so once you do that inside your goggles, um, you, can, you can do that. So you can crank up the VTX power, and then you'll have a lot less problems. So I also tried it out on the goggles that didn't come with the set. My Skyzone O4Xs, the pros work great with this. So uh, I flew around the house and did another review on this one. And this one was kind of nice because it does have optical flow on the bottom and it comes up and kind of holds its position and it sees the floor when it's coming in for a landing. So very similar to a lot of more expensive style drones, but incorporating that same technology for brand new beginners in the hobby. So um, that's kind of a nice safeguard for learning how to fly in angle mode uh, and then horizon mode. And then finally the holy grail of FPV, which is acro mode. So uh, no stabilization on acro mode. And uh, yeah, and that's what we all want to get to in FPV. I know a lot of you guys are watching are beginners and we try to stick to uh, making sure we help out everybody on the channel, but also just here to show you what's new and what has been really great for us in the month of January, 2024. So far, this is some of the funnest and coolest stuff that we've had to show on the channel. It's been really fun having show and tell with you guys as always. And um, I will definitely keep you updated. Please do subscribe on the channel guys, because I do have a whole ton of stuff coming in uh, for the month of February. So stay tuned and check out our links down below. It helps keep the channel going. If you appreciate drone camps, please do use our links. Uh, I would definitely appreciate it, but take care guys. And again, I will see you on the next one.